Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Australian China Institute for Arts and Culture at Western Sydney University. My name is Jing Han. I'm the director of this institute. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands we are sitting on today at various locations, particularly the Darug people of the Darug Nation, where the institute is located at our Parramatta South Campus. And I pay our respect to First Nations elders, past, present, and emerging. Welcome to a candid conversation with the artist Zhou Xiaoping. Just a warning that in the conversation, we will mention the names of Aboriginal artists who are diseased. Deceased. The first and the most thing when introducing the artist Zhou Xiaoping is that he is very unique. His artistic journey in Australia started with virtually an accident. He got lost on his way to Uluru and was rescued by three Aboriginal boys. The incidental encounter with the First Nation people turned out to be his destiny. His fascination with the indigenous people, their love for and a connection with nature, their art and lifestyle took him back to Arnhem Land many times in the subsequent 30 years. Many people found Zhou Xiaoping's unconventional journey surprising and intriguing. Today, we are very honored and pleased to have the artist with us who will share his extraordinary experiences as he explored the Aboriginal's land and developed his own unique artistic expressions. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the conversation, so please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen while we're having the conversation. So here is my first question. Welcome, Zhou Xiaoping. Well, now, uh, let me ask the first question. As an artist and new arrival in this country back in 1988, you took a completely different path from almost uh, different from almost everyone else. And the path you choose is certainly not an easy one. The wonderful thing is today you are a highly accomplished artist who has made many first ever uh, achievements. When I read about your journey, I can't help thinking of American poet Robert Frost's famous poem, The Road Not Taken. Let me just read the last two parts. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had ever trodden black. Oh, I marked the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere ages, ages hence. Two roads diverged in a world, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So 30 years on, when you look back at your life and the career, do you have any regrets? I'll talk about the regrets, but first of all, I like the poem. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I, I like to read it as well. But talking about the regrets, um, in our life, you know, always have this or that, you know, regrets, that's normal. But as far as the, you know, my career path, I choose, which is I choose, you know, I did not think I, I regret, you know, instead I think I have uh, uh, gained a lot. I see this experience, you know, uh, on my uh, wealth, you know, I, I, actually I like to live, you know, in the, in the bush or in the city both. You know, usually, but the problem is, you know, sometimes uh, that is very different uh, lifestyle. You know, they are in the conflict. You know, but I have to learn how to switch between the, these two. I talk. I say this is like a survival rules. You know, and when you live in the bush, you have the bush rules. How do you survive it? And in the city as well. You know, that so that kind of different lifestyle. You know, I come from the bush. You know, I live in the city. And they go from city to the bush, you know, I mean, not just for a short time and for a long time. And then your mind, maybe, you know, you're going to change it and thinking is differently. 
I look at the things might be differently. So yeah, so I have to, to learn how to switch between these two. Yeah, but generally speaking, I don't think uh, as I have that regrets, you know, in as what I choose as my career. Mm. I mean, I can hear, I can tell, I can see that you're a very positive minded and adventurous person. So, you know, you took all these adventures in, in a, such a positive and um, joyful way. That's really inspiring and uh, quite amazing. Um, so my second question is, when you first came to Australia in 1988, did you find instant connections with indigenous people? What were the initial things that attracted you to indigenous people? Instantly, no, I don't think I had a, you know, instantly, because I went, before I came to Australia, 88, I had a first exhibition in Melbourne. And after the exhibition, you know, they, 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 I just say, really, I don't know anything about Australia. Then we're talking about our Aboriginal culture of people. No, nothing, you know. I even I've never seen any, even say the pictures or something like that, you know, nothing. She said, no, nothing about the Australia and the Aboriginal people or culture. And uh, it, it was when I'm, you know, just, I was sad that after the one, uh, after the exhibition finished, uh, just about a month later, I went to Alice Spring and saw Aboriginal people. That was the first time. It took me, you know, it took some, some time to connect with them. Um, then, but the, the, the good thing is it, it did not really take it very long to get on with them, you know, to say, oh, we do really like each other, you know, just for the simple words like that. But what is that really attracted me or making me more interested in Aboriginal and Aboriginal culture, you know, for, I think as artists, of course, you know, first of all, you have to look at it as art or culture, you know, that will be making me more interested. For instance, like uh, in Alice Springs, I saw all the Aboriginal paintings, you know, dogs paintings, the colorful and so unique. You know, I never, you know, never ever seen it before I, you know, when I was in China, you know. Um, so that is like, uh, really, really interested to me. And uh, then after that, then I went to Alamana, right? Uh, then I saw the bark painting. But well, again, when you look at the bark, you know, painting on the bark itself, the bark is going to tell you something. Normally we work on the paper and the canvas, and suddenly you see, okay, some of our work on the bark. You know, that's very unique as well. And the plus, rock art. The rock painting, I mean, that is the, probably one of the major, you know, the, the, the things that really attract me because many times we only see all the work, you know, from the museum, galleries, you did not really see from the, in the nature, you know, in the alumni, you know, they, they, to me, this alumni just, you know, all the other rock art, just like a, a, a biggest, uh, the museum really is, you know, in, in the in nature, you know, so that is really attracting me, you know, for me, well, I can say is like I fall in love with the culture, you know, to want to know more and more about it. Well, I found your answer is really inspiring and quite touching because, you know, I came around at the same time as you did in 1988. It took me much longer to discover the beauty of, uh, you know, First Nation culture, their stories, the true, true uh, history. And, uh, but the way you describe, you know, describe their art, uh, their world, their land at the Open Museum, I think it's a, such a good vivid image. You know, you're attracted by the color by the art on the bark and the rock art. It just, I, I can see why you're artist and I'm not, you know. So being an artist, you, 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 you were attracted by this artistic inclination that you have. It's really um, unique and I can see why, you know, the, that's, that explains a lot. So um, and then the following question is really uh, in relation to that. You know, can you give us one or two of your experiences, the real story uh, that you had with indigenous people that had a big impact on you? Impact, actually, they, I think as every stage has a different impact, you know, from beginning and then later and then later, even today, you know, always have some kind of impact around them. 
Um, I'll maybe just give you one of the examples about um, late Jimmy Pike, you know, especially in the early days, you know, when well, this in the early 90s. Um, so I, I learned, you know, I learned a lot, you know, a lot of the living skills uh, from him in the desert. You know, they, they, he took me you know, around the, in the Kimberley to show me a lot of different things, um, you know, such as how to uh, identify the, the, whether some fruits are poisonous, you know, how to, you know, some you cannot eat, some you can, and how you're going to see this is you can or cannot. You know, that is a very skilled living life experience and how to read some animal tracks, you know, because this hunter, we are, when we live in the in the bush, you have to do so, you know, to, to, to hunting all the animals, you know, to survive. So in addition to this, you know, of course, you know, Jimmy told me some stories related to, to you know, the, 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 the life and the, the land, you know, the, what is the connection between them, you know, uh, because there are so many, you know, closely related to the and also, you know, with the water or animals or the stories, right? So it, it um, I mean, it is a really you know, result of the long period of the raining being, you know, between the man and the nature, you know, that is how I learned as quite a lot from him, right, from him, because he's, Jimmy is the artist, you know, and, um, you know, he's, he's the harmony with the nature or his uh, devotion to the painting or artist, uh, you know, as artist, uh, and his respect to the country, you know, to the land, to his country and his land, you know, this all have, you know, you know, brought me a lot of the lessons and helped me to understand the life and art. So that kind of experience we go through, you will learn a, really as attached. That attached that is not just say what did you see it and you feel, you know, you feel about it. And it's the real life and but of course at the same time you know we always say as artists we may be thinking a little bit more than just uh, you know ordinary person you know people you know always think linked to the arts the culture you know that that is all everything that's i think that is life experience you know that i, I think that they all you know impact you know as we're talking about on me um i, I, I always thinking i have always thinking you know the board that so I'm not, if I'm not the come through this, I may be just like uh, many other artists, you know, you, you maybe know all the Chinese painters or others, you know, they just paint all the landscape or whatever. So I'll probably just one of them is nothing different or special, you know, and, uh, but this is made me, as we're talking about this land or this country and this culture, you know, made me a real as like artist, you know, because I learned uh, quite a lot quite a lot from this land, right? From these people, from this culture, you know, even sometimes I mean, you know, this somewhat is difficult, you know, as a lifestyle or everything, you know, but I have never, you know, regret the, yeah. I mean, it's uh, quite amazing that you, uh, you had, you formed this very special bond with the indigenous people, their, their art and their lifestyle. To, to, I mean, came, came all the way from China. Do you feel like throughout the, especially at the early stage when you are developing this aunt and friendship, do you feel like it, uh, there are some values, the Chinese values and Aboriginal values that they share that they help you bond them? Oh, yes, yes, always. You know, when I'm living in the community or in the bush, you know, with all the people, particularly with all the children, like in that early, you know, 1990s, you know, I was artist residency at that, you know, at the Marimbrilla School, you know. So with the children, people, you know, we, we do sharing a lot of different things. You know, let's say start with some, or for instance, like uh, when they look at me, they just say, okay, at that time I was very, very young, you know, okay, now it's getting old. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a long hair, you know, then when they look at me, they say, okay, Bruce Lee, you know, they just talk to me as Bruce Lee. When they say the Bruce Lee, I was shocking. Now I say, how come you know the Bruce Lee? You know, that's a long time ago, you know, like uh, 20, 30 <laughs> years ago. And uh, then later I found out because I watched the um, video, you know, uh, Bruce Lee, Jackie Lee, or what's that, Jackie Chan, you know, they're all the Kung Fu movies. 
Yeah. And then they look at the real person stand at front of them. They just say, okay, this looks like a fish to me, you know. And but a good thing is I do learn some, you know, the movements in the martial arts, they kind of move it. And, uh, you know, you, well, we get on very, very well in a way as love, you know, as general life, you know. Um, but at the same time, you know, sometimes I learn a lot from them as, as, as well, because from at the beginning, I was very, 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 you know, curious about everything, you know, about everything, you know, lifestyle or the culture or anything. But over the time, sometimes I've forgotten what's that is. I'm still the, as an artist because I live in the bush in the for so long, and that all becomes like I just say, okay, I'm just the, as a person. I'm not really thinking as all the thing related to the art or not. So that kind of more becomes like I'm part of their life or their family, and they also they, when we becomes like that kind of a relationship, right? We just become as like a, a family, you know. That when we become a family, then you just feel. Uh, as a part of that, and they're going to share a lot to you know with me, and I'll share a lot, you know, different things with them as well. You know, that kind of experience and the influence, you know, is is coming to both sides. You know, that's what we're talking about as a dialogue or that. It's both sides. You know, this uh, and uh, that kind of experience do you know influence on my artistic, you know, the way you know the 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 things as well. Uh, that is, I think, is uh, really is normal, you know. The, 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 yeah. So um, yeah. But anyway, so I really, you know, enjoy it. You know, enjoy it. You know, how to working with the people in the community, particularly, you know, when I'm in the Arnhem Land. You know, Arnhem, I've spent quite a bit of time in Arnhem Land. You know, teaching children how to draw. You know, the painting and to, to, to and that for them is the first time really. You know, to uh, some people really, you know, hands by hands to teaching, because because before I came to Australia, I was teaching anyway. You know, teaching I look up to like every day about five hundred students, you know, at the school and you know, teaching students. So I do have the kind of experience to teaching children how to draw and look at the things and thinking the things in artistic way. You know, so that kind of experience we share in both, of course. And as I said before, you know, they do, you know help me to understand many different things, particularly like the environment and even the culture in the bush, you know, the, uh, so many different things anyway, you know. Yeah, I mean, you know, like you mentioned you as a teacher, and you were um, employed as an art uh, in residence at Miss Meningrate uh, Aboriginal School in Northern Territory. I think you are the only one, the first, uh, you know, Chinese Australian or Western Chinese artist that, that I ever heard of. That I was made, uh, you know, artist in residence in Northern Territory. How did that happen? Um, well, that is the well. Um, I think uh, after that, like uh, I stand a few while sometimes in the Arrow Spring, and after that, the people they just say, okay, so this Chinese, you know, on that, at that time they just call me a Chinaman. So this Chinese, they just say, okay, why we suddenly we found someone, you know, sit at front of us asking so many questions about the Aboriginal culture. They are very curious and you know, surprised as well. Then they told me, say, okay, so if you're really interested, what about if you go into Arma? Then I just went to Arma step, you know, just one, one step to another step to the Arma really. At that time, even today, actually, you know, you not get the kind of opportunity, you know, chance to get a permit to get into the Arma or the Aboriginal communities, you know. So after that, and the people really liked, like than me, you know, so I like them too. They just ask me, say, well, you're going to come back. I say, yes, why not? You know, why not? You know, now I'll be invited. And uh, the second time and third time, they just say, okay, now this time we're going to pay you. <laughs> okay, not just say asking you to come back. Now it becomes a few months in, uh, you know, working at, you know, in Marangarita School. You know, it just becomes our artist residency over there. So what are my job over there? Over, over there to do, you know, just one is I'm teaching. I was teaching, you know, teaching all the students at the school and also our station student, uh, children. And second, um, secondly, I, I do all the illustration work for the textbook, you know, because children, they use the bilingual, right? There's the Aboriginal language and the English, but they, 
you know, I'll be able to zoom stories, you know, very short. So they need some, you know, the pictures or, you know, something with the book. So I do all the illustration you know, to do so. So I, I think I made about seven or eight, so something like that, the small little book. And also spend a lot of time teaching them. Yeah. So that is the, how that happened. You know, after that, actually, there's quite a, quite a few schools that invite me. They just say, okay, come back again and again, you know, this is because we like you. <laughs> we like you, you know, as you say, that's how that happened, you know. Oh, that's really touching. I mean, there's a lot of interaction and also very meaningful. I mean, clearly you have made a lot of contribution, you know, all these seven books in that one school. That's really um, so in inspiring and it's quite um, amazing that uh, obviously you bond very well, you know, with them. So um, now we mentioned the Jimmy Pike. And there is another uh, Aboriginal artist that I had a very special bond and a friendship whose name is Johnny Bloom Bloom. Can you tell us, uh, I'm really curious to know, um, you know, uh, about your relationship or friendship with him. Can you tell us um, more about why he's so special to okay. you? Yeah, he, he was a very, very knowledgeable man. He's some man, you know, when we're talking about some man, some you know seeing this some man um wow that is what we call and also in other words we call law man you know he's a very very knowledgeable person yeah and uh, i learned uh, quite a lot with you know from him really and uh the well this um long how well long story i should go back i try to remember how long ago uh, let's say about 20, more, even more than 20 years ago, right? I spent a lot of time living with him and, and his family in the our station called Wudeja, right? In the Wudeja. And, and uh, you know, most of the time, that's in the Alamana next to the Darwin, okay? So um, during that time, you know, during that time, we developed our, um, you know, very very good relationship and the trust the most of the time, you know important is the respect and the trust you know so that is very very quite you know very important that is take a is quite you know some time is not just say one trip or two trips you know that is a, uh, i think is very important or special you know for many people you maybe just go you know meet the once twice and after that you know finish it all or maybe years years later you maybe renew it again but for us, you know, for us and with the family, we're talking about the family members and a lot of people, many, many people, you know. So, so let's give you maybe as one of the examples, you know, like um, I think this was, um, uh, I can't remember exactly what the year, but this is one some time ago, you know, some time ago. And I saw him, you know, he, he was painting a small little bug painting. I don't know what he's going to paint, right? I just watch him. You know, watch it and just like in the paint. And after that, it took about a few days, you know, four or five days. And then I saw this two uh, turtle, yeah, on the back paint. And uh, then I just help him to, you know, to get all the colors, you know, do all the um, assistance kind of work, you know, help him. And uh, sometimes I'm just asking him questions about the Aboriginal painting, back painting, all this. And he told me lots of different things, right? Uh, I think that's a few days later, and then we met again, and he told me, say, he had a dream last night, and uh, he said, uh, that's about uh, the two turtles. I said, geez, I, I had this dream last night too, and I dreamed of the turtle as well. Then we just looked at each other, and he said, um, yes, now, that turtle now becomes as your turtle. Is my turtle because I have my skin name as Aboriginal name Gojok, right? So every so most particularly in the uh, Northern Territory and Alamana, uh, all the Aboriginal people that have a skin name as and also they have turtle, um, yeah, and some people that have bush name as well. So I have a Gojok as skin name, and at that time the Johnny just tell me say, okay, now, brother. Yeah, the bird, you know, just call me a brother because he, he older than me, but you know, but, but still in the in the skin name, but he, we are still as a brother, 
you know, as the skin nav system. Um, so um, that then he just gave me as a turtle, as a, uh, turtle the turtle is becomes my turtle under that painting. I still have the painting, you know. So all the kind of things are making me, I mean, between us is so much, you know, meaningful and special. And then, then later, I, I spent a lot of time with him in, in the bush. And then later, then I invite him coming to Melbourne, you know, stay with me and in my studio do a lot of different you know, things and the paint the, and the collaborate, you know, did quite a few, you know, collaborative work, right? So they all become so special, you know, when you, we talk about a collaboration, you know, it's not that easy to say, okay, you and me, let's collaborate. It's not that easy, you know, just say, you have to build up some kind of respect and the trust first, like each other, you know, and some concept that comes through you on the spiritual, spirit, you know, come from both of your side, understanding each other. So that's all very special, I mean, between us, Really, you know, that's kind of later, you know, particularly, I think he came to Melbourne about 2007, I think, that's quite a few years now. And uh, then we produced, uh, oh, yeah, a number of great paintings, even, I mean, yeah, then we had a show, you know, at the Melbourne Museum and in China as well, and I'll get a, you know, great feedback. And uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> I can hear from your story, you know, the, the two very important, the key words, when you actually have cross-cultural, intercultural friendship and genuine uh, relationship, it's really, uh, first one needs a trust, you know, trust that you build the trust and then you build trust on respect. So that's really two very important words and that's, that's how, you know, we can see that you have this very special relationship with Aboriginal people and to, in, represented by a particular personal friendship with them, Johnny Boulogne Boulogne. It's a really touching story. And I do uh, see you, ha you had a painting and this painting is called How Johnny Sees Me. And you know, I can see this painting. I always love this painting. So, and now we heard uh, quite a lot about you uh, talk about Johnny. And I'm really curious to know how Johnny saw you actually and how other Aboriginal people you knew that I saw you or relate to you. Um, very good question. So this can't answer, I sh we should interview Aboriginal people, is it? You <laughs> from them to tell uh, everyone how they're thinking of me. But generally speaking, you know, when we, you know, get together, particularly we're talking about the journey, you know, in the bush or in Melbourne, or, you know, just we we do like each other, you know, they respect each other as well. And um, most of the time, you know, Johnny, you know, they're just asking me very, you know, just general questions, you know, they just say, you know, very different, the culture is very different. But I'll still, I, I like to give examples, you know, just say, uh, for instance, one day he was in the, you know, my, my, my studio, and we do the painting. After the painting, we have the little rest. And then suddenly he said, um, I know, Xiaoping, you know, you, you got a, sometimes he call me Xiaoping, some call, call me as a gojo, you know, as a skin Aboriginal name. And uh, I know, you know, so, well, you know, just like that, you know, just the hell are you going to talk, you know? And then just say, can you, some stage, can you, um, uh, you know, buy, a gift, a present for me. I say, what, you know, just say, you know what? He said, you know, looks like, you know, there's a bigger tummy, you know, big tummy, what's the bigger tummy? You know, you know, in the bigger tummy, you know. And then later I say, oh, okay, I know what you're talking about. You know, I don't know, the, the Buddha, <laughs> all right? Chinese is the Buddha, you know, the happy, he says, the happy face, you know, happy face, smiling all the time, you know, but I said, why you want that for? You know, I said, oh, I know that's Chinese, very special, you know, for Chinese people. And uh, at the house in the home, and he wants me. He, he wants me explain to you know why he's just happy and you know, tell him all about uh, that's the you know much about Chinese culture you know that. And then later so I say I say why you want that for you know he said oh, well, I think that that, that, that that person that Buddha you're going to bring lucky to me. <laughs> <laughs> bring the lucky to him. I was like, well, okay you know just bring lucky. to him you know that's just off the one of you know examples you know of course. Sometimes I do paintings and he looked at me and stared at me and asked a lot of questions. And finally they just say, 
you know, God, you are so different, right? You are so different, different or, or different. I mean, he's all different with, you know, than other Bananda. Well, Bananda is in Aboriginal language as a white people, right? Different than other white people. And I don't, I don't think they just give you a lot of explanation as we do, you know, or give you all the reasons. That, but they kind of one or two simple words, you know, just few, and making you feel something, right? Making you feel something very meaningful. You know, we don't need to give us so much stories, right? And um, paragraph to paragraph about, you know, so, so that's how, uh, uh, you know, then, then what do we do? For instance, another example, very short, right? So they just say, okay, uh, when I was in the bush, they just invited me to attending some ceremonies, right? So I don't need to talking about it, just say, okay, you know, gotcha, you are our people, you know, you are our people, so you can come along with us for the ceremony. Sometimes it's very secret ceremony. I'm talking about a secret, I'm kind of not talking too much um, here. And uh, some just funeral, you know, other initiation ceremonies, you know. So that, the words, when they're talking about, that's how they look at me, just trust me. And I just say, you are our people. I think that's enough. I mean, yeah. that's how they, you know, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a very good answer. And, you know, like you said, it's not just the through words that they're telling you, but it really is through their their action, their interaction with you. That is the very telling. And you can see that the trust is there and, you know, there's very special bonding there. And you also mentioned that, that you've had artistic collaborations with them, uh, you know, Aboriginal artists, including Zhang Yi Balloon Balloon. And particularly this one, the portrait of a Johnny Balloon Balloon, uh, which I really love. I think it's a fantastic. Can you tell us how did this collaboration work for this particular painting? Um, actually, I did. Um, I did it him first. You know, draw him. Uh, it's not 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 completely finished. Just you know, basically a little bit of color touch up and the position on the on the painting. Um, so then he looked at that, so he just said, oh, that's great painting, you know, of, of him. So he's, oh, then I said, you know, you want to add something? He, well, you know, he just looked at that and said, oh, that's thinking about, thinking about, and it took us a few days or some time. And he said, yes, he got an idea, so let's do it. You know, let's, now I'll just leave it with him, the, the canvas. And then he finished the background. And then he, then the rest of the, I'll just finish the, his portrait, you know, portrait. So that is, I mean, sometimes the collaboration is not really planned, you know, carefully planned, oh, what do we do? I have a schedule or time or whatever. You know, sometimes it's, it's just a happen, just a happen, you know, particularly like uh, I've collaborated with Jimmy Pike, you know, it's not any plans really. And, uh, you know, they just come out. And with that paint, this painting, particularly, uh, you know, again, you know, again, uh, then just, you know, happen. Uh, they haven't, they just come out. I, I like this one very much. So, yeah, yeah this very, very strong image is really catch that, you know, he. Indeed. Uh, anyway, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I really truly love this one. I think it's beautiful. Yes, yeah. I think what you say is so convincing. I mean, so um, making a lot of sense. It's like happens naturally rather than decide you do this part, I'll do that part, you know, being right. artists, the voice of you. It's really very intuitively. So it's really, really um, explains why it's so beautiful. And you also have, you know, uh, collaborations with, with them. And um, in this particular one, there is another one that uh, shows, it's called a journey, it's a discovery, uh, it's called discovery of a trading. And this is a very, you know, cross-culture painting. Uh, can you tell us the the design behind the painting and were there any challenges that I, you you and Johnny had to overcome? Um, this this painting was done by well Johnny did the first start the you know the, you can see the you can see the side from uh, right you know the right side you know they have uh, you know, like a it's Johnny painting right he started the first and um, he you know he painted the uh, you can see the, 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 I think at first the, 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 the black color, the figure is the Aboriginal. And then in the middle one is the trepan, sea cucumber. And the coming down, there's, you know, have the Chinese. 
and they can then last is a soul, not soul. That is the exchange between the Aboriginal Macassans um, and also Chinese as well, actually. Uh, so when he finished, that is a story about the Macassan, between the Macassan and the, uh, the Aboriginal people, the trading, the story. So when he finished it and then leave to me, then I just, you know, then I have to make a whole completely finished uh, the, the, the painting, really. You know, then I put, um, of course, I use the images, you know, they kind of a bit more misty, you know, not very clear, and uh, they kind of dragon and behind it, you know, on the rest of the painting. And uh, with another Macassan, you know, Macassan, you can see the way that the head, you know, the head of the worry is Macassan's head. And they use the scale and trading that I'm talking about the trading. But the most important in this painting, I used the, the seal, you know, the seal in Chinese character is called trading, right? Trading. Because the trading is really between the, these three nations, right? These Macassans, uh, you know, coming come over to Australia and uh, collected all the the Japan, right? Japan and uh, you know, with the Aboriginal people. And after that, the Macassans, you know, get sell, sell all the Japan to China, right, to China. So that's how they trade. They, I think it is the first trade in Australian history, really. You know, that's, that's come through the uh, Aboriginal people there. You know, that is how, and um, yeah. So for the, this painting, I think a special, bit of special is about the seal, you know, the stamps, you know, the one, two, three, three stamps. Last the stamp on the left, I think I left the corner, down corner, that's my name. And the, the other two stamps, this all characters about the trading and the first the trading, yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful, you know. So, you know, when to my eyes, it is really, really beautiful. And it's such a, uh, a perfect, you know, artistic example of uh, collaboration. Uh, however, which I actually found to my surprise afterwards, that your collaborations with Aboriginal uh, artists, including you know, Johnny Balloon Balloon, caused some controversy back then. Was that surprised to you? Can you share with us some details and particularly how you felt? Um, you you talking about the um, con controversy? Yeah, that's right? controversy. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> okay. Well, I have I've been faced uh, this all the way until today. Even I'm talking about not just in the beginning, you know. So that is uh, well, you know, there's something very unique we're talking about as unique, but also at the same time, some people like it, some people don't like. It. I, to me, as an artist, you know, I accept, I respect, it, you know, I'm not accept that everyone's liked my work, you know, as an artist. Uh, that's normal, right? Normal. But sometimes, sometimes when they raise the issues or the concerns, uh, to me is a bit, um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> you know, the words I try to make it a bit more careful, you know. Just I, well, I'll put it in this simple way, just I do not really like it. You know, this, uh, um, they, I'll just give you some, maybe as example, you know, while I'm doing the, some painting, or I'm doing painting, if I do some paintings on the Johnny's painting, top of the Johnny's painting, and the people did not I really like it, what's the reason of that? They just say, okay, we just want Johnny's paintings, we don't want any other painting, people's uh, brushes on Johnny's painting, Aboriginal painting, it did not look like as Aboriginal painting. This is not Aboriginal, this is between the, to artists that we can do whatever we want to really, you know, it's not about this is the original painting or not. We just have two people, artists, you know, why we have to look at that way. To me, it's not a, I don't think it is, uh, is the right, you know, is the right. All the kind of things, other things that maybe just some people did not like a collaboration between the Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. I mean, you know, the, I, 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 I did not really, um, sometimes I think they just say, they really care about Aboriginal culture has been uh, respected enough or good in, in a good way, in a good way. Um, but sometimes if you go over care, I mean, this becomes some terrible really, you know, just really just stop people. You cannot do this one, you cannot do this one. You know, that cannot 
is not only to me, sometimes to Aboriginal artists as well, you know, because we are collaborate, you know, we are as a collaboration, you know. So, so uh, that is, I'll I, I say these people, you know, I think there's quite a lot, you know, gatekeepers around really, you know, to tell us whether we do, whether we can or can't not to do so, you know, that's, um, but I, but what I, I don't know how I'm going to say particularly with all the, con, you know, controversial, you know, version, I'll probably, I heard it quite a lot, you know, many times, even today, you know, still people say, you know, that's not right, but, but it's getting better or good. Good thing is when people know, know me and know what I have been done and I, what, the, what I'm doing it, you know, they do start to understand it. They just say, oh, okay, you know, that's fine. You know, that's okay. There's, you know, this guy still around after 30 years and is not, you know, just go away. You know, this is, uh, I think there's another problem for uh, in this society that, that is, you know, there are, um, some people as like a tourist, right? They're going to the community or they, 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 they look at some things and then after a few weeks, they just make it some comes, it's just like experts, right? So comments, you know, there's not a, you know, the, the, the right, you know, so they, they, there's the people like that is around as well, you know, so, but anyway, so I do accept, you know, accept or respect anybody's, you know, the view, you know, whether they agree or like my work or not, but it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I know what I'm doing. I know all the original people like me, you know, and they support me and the artists like to work with me. And I can go on and on why the people like me and, you know, like Rini from the Jura in the Uluru, you know, she, she always, you know, she's Remy, you know, they call me shopping, you know, I shopping when I'm going to come over to your studio, I want to work with you. You know, it's just very simple, you know, because we did work together before, right, before. So then some other people, they just make all the criticism or comments to say, oh, Shabi, you cannot do this one, or you cannot use the dots, or you cannot use that sample or whatever. I mean, yeah, but that's normal, I think. <laughs> anyway. I mean, well said. Uh, you know, like it's a quite interesting, I think I read somewhere or I heard you say uh, that often the criticism are actually non-Aboriginal people. And, you know, I know the Professor Matthew Lanton and she spoke openly, highly of your your art, your uh, collaborations with the Aboriginal artists. So, and I think the the one of the painting you ended up painting because of this, uh, or or called at one time a controversy, is "Don't Speak for Me." I love that painting. I think it applies to lots of things. It's a really beautiful painting, and which actually selected for Solomon's Prize Show in 19, uh, 2011. So, and could you tell us how uh, the, that painting was received? Did this painting change your way of incorporating, uh, you know, with indigenous art in your own work? Um, don't speaking for me, I think that that is how I hear, you know, I heard from the Aboriginal artists all the time, really, you know, when we live together, we, we faced to some you know, people come from outside and they just say this or that, you know, and also other things, you know, as well, you know, just say, tell us what are we to do, you know. Then we're just getting annoying, really, you know. It's not just about me, don't speak for me, and for Aboriginal people as well, you know, a lot of Aboriginal people, they just say, we know what we do, we can do, we, we can thinking, we can do, you know, even better than you guys, you know. You don't need to speak for me. You know, to tell me how to do or do this or do that. You know, so don't speak for me. Most I think I, I, I was, you know, in in this painting, I borrowed, you know, original uh, words. You know, people they told me, you know, about this. Yeah. So in other in, in other words, you know, sometimes people really care about Aboriginal culture has been, you know, really respected in a, in a way how to display or explore that. You know, I accept that or, or understand or agree with that. But please do not, you know, over, I'm talking about the overcare. And when you say the overcare, it, that is actually, oh, well, I should, you know, that is not that really good, really. You know, we all can think, right? We all can think if we live in the bush or in the outside, you know, we're even thinking better than anywhere else, really, you know? So, um, um, yeah, so that is the, uh, 
about you know they uh, yeah about the don't speak for me you know this that is the message you know to tell um, the people who is really I, I have to say that these people did not really understand the you know the culture and the, the land you know so they just make their own judgments or whatever you know so yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a great painting and it's a, you know, a very, I mean, very thoughtful as well. And it's such a powerful, it's a very powerful painting too. So that's one of my favorites of your paintings. I love that one. And you were also responsible for the first exhibition of Aboriginal artworks in China. The first one was uh, exhibited in 1996 and the second one in 1999. Both were very successful. Why do you think it's so important to introduce indigenous art in China and to Chinese audiences? Well, that time, 1996, at that time, two Chinese people, I don't think they under, you know, they, um, uh, they haven't seen any Aboriginal art or, you know, people or culture. They did not see anything really, you know, that they, I thought that, you know, I, 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 I believe, I believe my, ex, the, you know, my experience has, you know, play a very important role for the Chinese people to truly understand Australia culture. I talk about a truly you know, understand Australia culture, you know, because this is multiculturalism, our culture country, right? There's uh, so many different, you know, culture, you know, from that. So, so for probably for many people, you know, Australia is like a multicultural country and has not really, you know, yet, you know, from, I mean, the form to the, the own culture, you know, for here, um, other than the indigenous culture, of course, you know. So at, you know, at that time, the Chinese people did not really even know, um, you know, they, there was a, such a kind of the art as Aboriginal art, you know, I thought that is, um, it's very important for them to, to know as well. Um, Oh, I think maybe sh briefly because we, yeah, I'll just briefly to give you an example. And uh, there was, uh, I think, a national national gallery in, in China. They came into Australia. They just say they want to have, uh, you know, ex exhibition, you know, to, to get some exhibition from Australia going to China in the national gallery in Beijing. And uh, they look around so that after that, they just say, okay, you know, we can see so many European arts and this and that. So if we, we can get it from American Europe, you know, all the bigger galleries in much better, from much better, good quality. But after that, they just say, okay, something very different as Australia, that's Aboriginal art, Aboriginal culture. So that is what we need to tell Chinese people, you know, to, to know about this culture. You know? And uh, I, I feel I have, you know, like a, responsibility and obligations to promote, you know, Australia culture. I talk about as Aboriginal culture or Australia culture. You know, I also think that this should be, you know, this one of the best in the Canada. And to make the, the, the connection between these two countries. You know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't agree with you more. I mean, you know, when people talking about Australia, sometimes they refer to it as a new world. And so you know, strictly speaking, it's not New World. And the Asian, uh, Australian uh, Aboriginal people have lived on this land for 60,000 or 80,000 years. So it's a really ancient land and an ancient uh, nation. So um, yeah, yeah, yes, it's so important to know Aboriginal history in order to understand what Australia is. Um, the next question is a rather bigger question, but you may choose to answer in a brief way or even with a dot point. What have you learned from Indigenous art? Have you ever thought what your art style would be like without the influence of Indigenous art? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a really big question. <laughs> yeah, I, I learned quite a lot from them, obviously, you know. Um, well, not just from the, as art, everything, you know, from all the, the culture. The culture I was talking about is quite a broad, you know, there's a lot of different things and how they, the view you know, of of the the environment or the landscape, everything. You know, to look at you know, there's making me. I mean, they're thinking as artists. You know, look at it a little bit different. You know, different because when you're living in the bush, you know, you have to be really see. You know, just say 
uh, you need to survive, that you need a hunting, why you're gonna hunting, all that kind of story you're gonna relate coming to the artwork. And uh, yeah, well, I do actually, I do, you know, I learned quite a lot really. Um, so the, to, to me, I have for, you know, different stages. In the first stage when I'm, I can, what I can, what I painted to see what I can see. You know, I see and I paint and then later, now it becomes our understanding. Then you know, what I understand the culture and the meaning of the land, then I paint it. You know, and then, then later I'm probably going to see a feel, you know, how you feel about and the understanding and the feel about, and then you curate in your, your work in, the, in the, my own work, right? So that's in the different stage, you know, and if we particularly we're talking about or maybe I just say in you know, all the impact on me, you know, with influence on me, you know, with all the art, you know, painting, rock painting, particularly rock painting. I like that very much. So, you know, that is you know, where they come from. Where all the art come from, really. You know, art come from. Um, yeah, so that is, I'll probably just give a very short answer for this one because they're so big, you know, I can expand, explore this more and more, yeah. Um. During, because you currently you have a physical exhibition actually, which is very lucky. All of us are, are was there um, at the opening um, Living Art um, uh, Art Gallery in Double Bay. So I saw uh, quite a number of your new, uh, you know, artistic works that you created during the lockdown. So, and I feel that I see some changes in your style, and I feel like there is a slight shift to a softening expression of emotions. Would you like to comment on your latest work? I, I love them all, honestly. <laughs> yeah, well, I do. Um, I like a change in my, my work in the styles or to telling stories, you know, they step by step by change. Sometimes that is how, that's me. If something I do too easy for me, I stopped, you know, I don't want to continue just repeating what I'm doing. It. And it becomes like that, that is not a way I'm doing it, or creating the painting. Always give me a bit more pressure or some challenge what I'm talking about. You know, just something, you know, to, to improve myself and, uh, and also to explore, you know, my thoughts and my understanding of many different things, you know, like this painting, you know, I do. It's like a word lady or a lotus, you know what they call. Um, you know, uh, but this kind of work I'm probably not really showing the public. I haven't got the chance to, you know. People like me to, to do uh, like my other works to imagine in all the related to the original, you know, thing. Uh, this kind of, I do a serious work as well, like this word lady or others. Uh, I, one day I'll probably be doing this, you know, to, to to show in this work in public as well. Yeah, I, I have a different work really. Yeah, I have different work. Mm. Yeah, I can see, you know, the color that you use, you use very, you know, like in a very subtle way. And also the details that you put in are also very subtle. So yeah, it's it's really beautiful. And um, I, I can't stop admiring them. My last question is, um, what is your plan for the next project? Uh, I am like a working, a, well, non-stop worker. <laughs> and I've got so many projects really, every, all the time, really, you know, this is simply, I'll just give you a few examples. Maybe I have to finish a book. So that is about um, completed into the, you know, just about that. And also I want to make a film, really, uh, a documentary by myself, you know, that's another Another project, but the main main thing is probably a major project I'm talking about is another a research exhibition project. It's about the story about the Aboriginal Chinese in Australia, right? That is quite a big project. Um, so I'm going to, you know, investigate this all the story and the interview all the people from, uh, you know, the Aboriginal Chinese in Australia, and then turn it into a big exhibition. Right, bigger, just more like a, like a Japan exhibition, as again, you know, like a history, history, you know, thing, right? Um, so, so this one that will be coming to, I think, is quite the quite a big, 
you know, quite a big and very important as well. Um, I have to say, you know, living in Australia for so many years or a long time, uh, come from China. So this is my like contribution to this country and the country, the society really, you know, to the, to the Australian people, um, you know, to, 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 you know, because I, I, I think I do, you know, I, I can do, you know, I can do for, you know, for, for, for the people really, you know. Mm. Well, it's going to be amazing, you know, the, if this is this a project and then a task you're, you're going to take, to, to take up. Uh, I also think you should, uh, one day, re write your memoir, you know, <laughs> write yeah. your own stories. Of course. It's really, yeah, really of course. interesting. You know, all those details and the stories that you, people you encounter, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I think, you know, time goes so, so fast and now uh, I can't take up all your time by myself. I have uh, seen uh, quite a number of uh, questions from the audience. And so I ask you questions for, uh, on behalf of the audience. The first one is uh, from your observation. Can you tell us, uh, share with us how Chinese art is perceived by Aboriginal communities and artists? Yeah, very interesting, very interesting. Jimmy is a very, uh, he was like the, a lot. I love, I took him to China and uh, about the two weeks, you know, he, he, he asked me a lot, but he, he interested, he liked it. And afterwards, uh, just like I'm in the bush, you know, I painted the original theme and the land and the Jimmy painted the China, about the China, you know, Great Wall and airport in the Yellow Mountain, you know, that is, I think it reflects, you know, as a, you know, as a as a as an Aboriginal artist like a uh, Chinese culture, yeah. You know, well, that is the one of the examples, right? And uh, so I can give you quite a few. You know, recently like a uh, Curtis Curtis Taylor, right? He's a young filmmaker uh, in the thirties. You know, living in WA, and he came to my studio, lived with lived with me, and uh, he just say, okay, Jiaping, teach me something. Right? I say what? You know, skill. You know, how to draw. And uh, about the Chinese, you know, asking me a lot of questions about Chinese painting, and you know, I to learn this and that, and the journey as well. You know, while I'm doing the painting, because I'm doing the painting on the floor, you know, I step on the painting as well. And they just say, why you step on your painting? And I say, it's too large, I can't get around. And he said, can I walk onto your painting? I say, yes, you can, if you want to. And can I do the brushes? You know, just hold the, my brushes and get all the colors on. I mean, you know, so many, they kind of, Example, I mean, they are really, really interested in you know, all yeah. the and it's a painting as well in the work. Yeah, so it's definitely the mutual influence. Yeah. Like if they influence you, you also influence them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really good. There's in relation to that question is also is uh, the two exhibitions that you brought to China on Aboriginal artworks. Um, do you think, uh, have you noticed any changes to, you know, from Chinese people, their understanding and uh, of Australian uh, or interesting Aboriginal art, have that understanding or interest increased? Uh, it is interest increase, yes, but very slow. Yeah, very slow, even today. You know, I, I started like in 1996, you know, the first exhibition of Australia Aboriginal you know, exhibition in China. And then at that time, they just said they did not understand. You know, nobody just said, all the curators, directors, audience people, audience and then uh, they did not really understand, you know. But later now, we're coming to today, uh, there's more and more people that just when they say, okay, this is an Aboriginal video, but they still do not really understand what is the story or to understand the work of painting, you know. So, but they do showing more and more interest, you know, but, but it's very hard for Chinese people, you know, in China, they do understand every, you know, all the Aboriginal art. Even I'm, I'm asking same question to Australian people. How many Australian people understand the original painting? You know, you can tell all the stories or whatever. And that's still, you know, is another challenge for Australian people as well. You know, but the the, the interest increased definitely. Yes, yes, that's that's very good, very good answer. Uh, from uh, another question from the audience, I wonder if you have you met some Aboriginal families in the Northern Territory who have. Chinese ancestry. Yeah, yeah, and many. Yeah, and many. Well, I can give you one example. 
half Chinese, Aboriginal family, half Chinese, right? You're talking about? Yes, that's yeah, right. Okay. They have a, a fam, fam, family member actually were Chinese. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, that's many. You know, like uh, I'll give you one example, very short, quicker. 25 years ago, I was in the in the, in the Bogo, right? Near the, in the Bogo. And there's another called China Garden, right? And at that time, I met seven people. And when we met together, which is shocking, we stayed, you know, stayed at each other, which is talking nothing, just look at each other, we just say, oh, how come? And after them, which is very, you know, so excited and hold hands at each other, say, okay. Um, but they cannot tell, they are Aboriginal Chinese, really. You know, uh, there's a father that, you know, there is like a Chai, Ali. You know, they only know this the name, and but don't know much about the background, you know, where they come from, the China, uh, the, the father's side, right? So then later I discovered and more and more from WA and from Queensland and North Queensland as well. So that is the project of what I'm doing now, right now, to discovery or to investigate all the stories all over in Australia, you know, then I can do the other evacuate and then I put it together as a big exhibition, mm. right? Yeah. That would be wonderful. We're really looking forward to that because, you know, apparently there are, you know, a lot of connections back then. There were a lot of connections between Aboriginal people and Chinese. And art is, I read the stories, why they are, because many Chinese came uh, from Canton there. The, usually their nicknames, uh, you know, uh, nickname is Ah Chi, Ah Ah Huang. So, and then in the end, they just uh, Ah they became their surname. So a lot of, uh, you know, Aboriginal uh, descendants they have this Ah as a surname, surname. So it'd be really wonderful to see the connection there. And I know quite a number of uh, uh, Indigenous writers. All of them have ancestors who were Chinese. Yeah. I have another question from Jocelyn said about the bush tucker food. Okay. Do, you, do you like a bush tucker? Can there be collaboration between Chinese and Aboriginal cuisine? Oh, yeah, well, oh, that's very interesting. You know, bush tucker, well, okay, I did give you some one example again. You know, all cooking the fried rice, you know, make it a little bit of veggies, cabbage, you know, all the rest, and make it a fried rice. And people love it and they love it. And uh, one or two, three, four times after that, and they just want to do something else. And then let's say, okay, one, you know, use kangaroo meat, right? In the bush, we hunted it, we got the kangaroo, and then we cut the small pieces of kangaroo meat. And uh, that's good thing is that we, we cooking at the bush fire. It's not like a, you know, proper stove or plate, hot spade, uh, plate or not. You know, like a barbecue or the stuff, you know, no, 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 no. This coming out is very different, very different. So we cook to the, at the bushfire and, uh, you know, sometime we just put all the fish or other things, you know, into the sand, you know, on the fire. So, so they're all coming very, I mean, very interesting and the taste is so different, you know, so different. Um, well, that is how we live, you know, in the bush. I don't know. Uh, you can see in the Melbourne or Sydney, there is the like a, a taka restaurant, bush taka restaurant, you know, the, the kind of things, but they're so different. You know, I mean, there's not the same, really. You know, you're not going to test the same as a week, how we cook it out of the bush, right? But how do they combine these two as Chinese, you know, they want, uh, well, people like it in the rice, you know, or a lot. Sometimes I'd cook it a different way in the, doing the noodles. You know, the people would normally would just, you know, put a word there, but I can fry noodles, you know. That is why there's so many Aboriginal people that love to eat Asian food, you know, in the Chinese food or Malaysia, in the Asian food, they love, you know, very much, you know, very, very much so, even today or before and now, you know, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, very good, yeah. Yeah, I think it would be a great idea to have the collaboration somewhere should we really do that show, you know. Yeah, so I know, yeah, good idea. Yeah, yeah fantastic good. idea about the TV show, you know, the yeah, collaboration between Aboriginal and Chinese people. Sure, sure. Indeed. And the next, next, two more questions. Next one is Doji. Doji asked a question. Thank you so much for a wonderful talk. Your painting are so unique. And um, may I ask how you would like to label or categorize your work, or you simply refuse to label your artwork? I don't think I need to or should be, you know, just say, 
I don't need to put the, this work in the category uh, something something, you know, put it in some category. Well, my work is my work. Xiaoping's work is Xiaoping's work. You don't need to labelize or put it in some category. Now, uh, that's how I feel, you know, but uh, I'll leave this, you know, to the public or to the, the viewers, you know, say what they think so. You know, as an artist, I'll just continue, you know, to say, yeah, I, that is Xiaoping's work, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Very good, and it's quite unique. You sort of can tell straight away. Last question from Emily. Hi, Xiaoping. I wonder if you can comment on the differences between Chinese and Aboriginal notions of land during your creation process, for example. Okay, land. Yeah. Right. Talk about land. land. Well, to the Aboriginal people, right, we all know um, it's very meaningful. Is like we talking about, you know, this, our life is our, our land is our life, right? It's very very meaning to them, uh, you know. Well, I don't need to explain too too much. You know, we all understand, right? Understand. Let's talk about the Chinese people, right? Not just anywhere, it's just Chinese for any European or other white people. You know, we use the land, we rent, we buy the land, we sell the land. Right, we use the land, right? It's not really the kind of connection between the people and the land. So that is, I think that's different. It's also is sometimes it worries me as well. You know, when you have a distance that you only use something, you all that distance make you did not really pay more respect to the land, you know, that your heart, your spirit, you know, did not really touch to that, and then you did not really care about that, right? You did not, I mean. When you say that land, our that land is our life, right? You really take care, you know, and put a lot, you know, your spirits into that, connected with that. So that is quite different, you know, quite different. So that's very, very important. That's why we say, you know, today we got the virus, right? We 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 talk about it. We all have been locking down for now nearly a year. So then when we face the other virus, you know, we cannot do anything, which is only closing the door to be locked the devil out. So which means that we are not as strong as we think we are. You know, and when you face to that kind of, you know, that kind of virus, you know, so which means that we need to pay more respect to the to the nature, to the environment, and to 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 to, to the land and understand that you know, it becomes as a friend in a good relationship, respect each other. Not respect and not just say people to people, really. You need to be as a land and the people, human, human or man and the natural, nature, sorry, nature, you know. So you need to, you know, understand and pay respect to each other. Then you will get a bit better life, I think. <laughs> you know? So that's how I understand that, you know, when we face something terribly like this virus, you know, we can't. You know, we just get lost, really. You know, then we feel we are not that strong or can control everything or be, you know, like that. Yeah, that's the wrong thinking, really. You know, that's for us to pay the, you know, pay the price, really, to understand the, what is the, you know, the nature and the, you know, the land mm -hmm. and the meaning of that, you know, to understand that. Mm. Well said, you know, so yes, no hold the land in all, you know, so. We can't thank you enough for this wonderful, wonderful conversation. And, you know, this is really a great conversation I've had. And uh, you are so articulate and you're so generous and you're so honest with your experiences. And there's so much we can keep talking. So, and there's very great shame or pity is that because of the COVID-19 restrictions, so we couldn't exhibit, do the, uh, you know, uh, physical exhibition of First European art. But we will, and with your so many new art, we really would like to do a physical exhibition in 2021. I'm sure we will have the chance. So thank you so much, Xiaoping, for your for your great conversation, and thank you, audience. Uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.